Joining us today, we have the renowned Angela Marr, having a career spanning over 30 years. She's recognized as a multi-award winning comedian, TV and radio presenter, entrepreneur, speaker, director, producer, and writer. The list is endless. Fantastic. Good. Angie Lamar. Lovely to be here. How are you doing? I'm really well, thank you. Fantastic. Well, after you stop and go, I've got you on the road. Finally, <laughs> finally. I think the most important thing is to get um, persons who are of renowned legend, nature, status Ooh. on the red chair because that is how my status rise. <laughs> okay. you know? oh, I always wow. say that I want to be with people as they rise, you know. But as you, as you have risen, <laughs> I'm the rising behind you, you know what I mean? Wow, you know? thank you. Well, listen, Angie, I want, I'm glad that you're here. And mm. um, as a lady, you wear many hats, as, yes. as you do. But I had a question before, but I don't want to ask a question. I'm going to ask you to say, who is Angie Lamar? Who is Angie Lamar? <laughs> yes. Well, um, I'm the, I started off as a comedian, yes. actress comedian, and I became Britain's first black female stand-up comedian. Yes. Uh, went into writing, went into theatre, went into uh, radio. I'd done it all, yes. but I didn't plan to do that. I just wanted to enjoy myself yes. in the arts. But one thing I do appreciate is the fact that I could do anything. Yes. So I don't stop at one thing. Yes. So you have me as a comedian, and then you have me as a writer, then you have yes. me as a producer, and then I think, oh, you know what I'd love to do? I'd love to do that. Yes. But I want to do it on the same level. Yes. That's the thing. I want to do it on the level that I've done it in the comedic world. Yes. I want to do it on the same level that I've done it on the radio ro um, ro world. So I don't just want to do it. Yes. I want to smash it. So therefore what you're saying is that you want to live life and yes. enjoy life and to make life in that way. Because it? we were told that yeah. you, can, you can't be a jack of all trades. Yes. But it's a lie. You can. And you can master them all as well. You don't have to do one thing for the rest of your life. Well, that is very interesting because I'm from Jamaica mm -hmm. and um, one of the things we always hear is get a job, um, go to school and um, blah 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 the normal yeah. process which many people learn mm. and they said the same thing you mentioned about Jack of all trade and master, master of none. none but then you see people like the Richard Branson the Trumps you mm. know whether we like it or not but they <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know but they all have different things it, yeah. did we miss did, did we miss something along the way there? we were trying and to be s safe yeah remember we come, we're coming from a different road yes so we were taught, we came over here, get a job, keep your head down, do yeah. the right thing, you know, make sure that you have your pension, make sure you're safe. Yes, yes. And, and that's the one thing from a history, we haven't been safe. Mm. So we wanted to get safe. Getting a job, get safe. But that generation gave, gave birth to us, mm. who in their safety made us feel secure enough to take risks. Wow. So my parents did everything they were supposed to do, and then they gave birth to me. Yes. And then... I just thought, well, I'm safe enough to go and do what I want. Right, right. Not realising that I didn't have to do what they wanted me to do. I didn't have to get the job and get the house and be yeah. safe. You get all of that in time. Yes. But I could live my life because of what they did. That's a very different perspective because normally one would think that um, by staying safe or them teaching you to be safe, it would make us somewhat s stay within the confines of our comfort zone. Yeah. But you have given a different perspective now, whereby because you had that feel of safety, you now feel like you could that's right. expand. And that's, the, and that's how I felt. Yeah. Because when I talk to my kids <coughs> now, I say to my kids, if they come up with an idea, I say, do it. Or yeah. you must. Or you've got to. Yeah. As opposed to, well, what will the people then say? Yeah. Will you be all right? No. You run, because I've given you the strength to run, yes. because I was given the strength to run. Yes. Now, we didn't know we were doing that when I, my parents didn't know, oh, we're making it safe yes. for you to be risky. Yes. They wanted me to be safe. Get the things, get the things that you should to carry on. Yes. But in my teenage years, my parents realised I was off, I wasn't normal. Yeah, yeah. I was never normal. Uh, you're not normal. I'm not normal. <laughs> the, the day I'm normal, it's over. I don't wow, want to be normal. Wow, wow, you know what wow. I mean? So I got kicked wow. out of school. I, yeah. I, I, I was a bad girl at school. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Not like how today's bad pe kids yeah. are. Yeah. You know, and I say some of them, I will say some of them. But I wasn't that. 
Mm. But I knew I was odd. I'd sit in class sometimes and I'd be looking at the teacher thinking, that don't make no sense. Yeah. And it's incredibly boring. It, it, so I want to go. Wow, it's interesting you say that. And I'm going off, off script now because you mentioned about in school, in class. I, I was just with a guy yesterday and he was talking about he didn't know he was um, dyslexic till he was 55. Yeah. And he went through and he became self-made in the sense of being a mechanic and he has his garage and everything like that. He was kicked out of school, yeah. but they didn't understand. Mm -hmm. And he didn't understand certain things. Yeah. Now, it's interesting you mentioned that because one of the questions which we have was one, one of our producers who, said, who happened to be dyslexic, who mm -hmm. said, as you are, and she wants to know in your experience and opinion, as you are dyslexic, yeah. Yeah? has there been any positive inroads towards highlighting dyslexia awareness within the black community in the last decade. And the reason why I believe this is profound is whereby the understanding, and based on the lack of understanding, it can hold back people or people have an idea of who they are. Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't get diagnosed until I left school. Mm. So my behavior was part of the fact that I'm severely dyslexic. Yes. So, and I'm left-handed dyslexic, yeah. which is even worse because the brain is just operating wow. in a different way. So when I was at school and my teachers used to walk in with the books, I used to think, I hope they don't ask me to read, you know? Yeah. Because I didn't think I could read. Mm. So when everybody used to read and the, the, they were so fluent, I used yes. to think, wow, so that word is next to that word and next to that word, and you've just read it, how amazing. Wow. So <coughs> when I read, the words disappear. They jumble up and they disappear yes. and they run around the page. So I'm reading it and trying to hold onto the word, yeah. but it's doing all kinds of madness. So I didn't know, I just thought, you're just stupid. Yeah. But, but did it create you as well as to you being the person you are because you had to become it's flamboyant, creative? It's absolutely, because yeah. then as I kind of like went through life and I, I went for an audition once and I couldn't get it, and the woman said to me, can I speak to you? Because I think you might be dyslexic. And I'm thinking, I ain't got no disease, bad yeah. dyslexic. <laughs> you know what I mean? <coughs> dyslexic for a dyslexia is the hardest word to spell and yes. pronounce. I mean, that's such a wicked word. They could have just called it dink. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so yeah, yeah. dyslexic, I, sometimes when I'm writing it, I'm like, what a wicked word yeah. to have to write. Because sometimes the, the Y and the S and the E. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't I'm trying to spell it right now. <laughs> that's yeah, right, yeah. that's exactly it. So mm. when I left and realised that I was tested and it was like, you are actually severely dyslexic. So that means you think out of the box. So when my teachers came in and they said stuff, I thought, well, that don't make no sense. Yes. Because I've already thought about it and processed it in my mind, because my mind is operating mm. on another level. 49% of entrepreneurs are dyslexic. I think, what's his name? Uh, one of Richard those in, Yeah, one of those inventors, well, what was, what was it? Um, Albert, Albert Einstein, Einstein. yeah. Wow. Dyslexic, you know. There's a lot of people who think mm. outside the box. And when I realised I thought outside the box, I promised myself never to get in the box. Wow. So I was always going to be odd. I don't care if I got kicked out of school. Yeah. I was at home cleaning the skating board, making sure that all the duties were done. My mum had me working. Yes. Then I got into another school. I got um, suspended and excluded. Ex I, I was just on this cycle yes, yes. until later on as I settled in college. But the way the brain thinks, if you, uh, and, I've tr and I let people know, because mm. when I found out Whoopi Goldberg was dyslexic, okay and left-handed and scorpion. I was thinking, oh my God, not only is she my idol, but yeah. she, we are, we are the same people. So you got company now, yeah, That's right. yeah, yeah. So I then started to tell people, hi, oh, guess what? I'm dyslexic and so is Whoopi. Yeah. So that's me and Whoopi. So, so, in, 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 so in regards to like the black community, like in mm. the last decades, because I, I think it's somewhat of a, a, a negative streak. In, it can be deemed as a negative streak if it is not understood, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I think now that people understand yes. dyslexia, and there's a book called The Gift of Dyslexia, mm. and that will help you to process the fact that you have a gift, you think differently. And once you start to research it, yeah. you start to realize that if I'm doing some work or printing, I print on blue paper or yellow paper yes. because it stables the writing. There's dyslexic glasses, there's dyslexic um, computers. Yes. There's so much for us that we can sit back and go, actually, I am dyslexic and I can own it, yes. but no big deal. So, so is this saying in a way for people in a whole is to understand and identify who they are and accept it? Yeah, because once you find what you have, yes. you understand what's going on. Yes. I used to feel stupid, you know, and if somebody wanted to call me stupid, I'd want to fight. 
Yeah. Because I think, I do feel dumb, and I don't know why I feel dumb. Yes. But the minute someone says, you're dyslexic, and you go, oh, well, that makes complete sense. Yes. Yeah. And they say, when the writing, um, when you're reading what happens, I mean, my handwriting is terrible. Mm. You know, for, for the things that I've done and written, thank the Lord for the computers. Yes. Because my writing starts here and ends up down there and goes all over the place. And then if I gave it to you to read, you wouldn't be able to read it, but I could read it. Yes. It's like I know my own mess right, and right. understand it. And I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I don't feel like when somebody is watching me write, I get embarrassed. Yeah. Now I'm like, nope, I'm, in dis I'm dyslexic. That's my stuff. Yes. And I'm all right with it. I'm so, all right with so it. So I, I guess the message then is for, it, that was like a base, mm. understanding that base. And from that base, then one propel and one parachute. That's right. Because... Um, you're famous, you said, on Channel 4, like Five News, black comedians, um, that while we have progress on paper, in reality we have not. I took this regard to mainstream access opportunities for black creatives, in your opinion, or how, where do we begin to make that progress in living reality for black artists and creatives? I say that because based on that base of the dyslexia, based on that base of me knowing who I am, mm. what is it now as a, a black comedian is within the, the black community? And, and the progress? I think the progress is always individual. Yes. But I've been around for so long, I can say I've sat back and watched it and watched the, the, the stop, start, stop, start. Yeah. We've gone from, you know, the black department to diversity. We want to talk about gonga peas and what that must be like. <laughs> See that? I've got a few ideas. If they stop me and say, no, take it to the black department. <laughs> Say, why are you sending me to the canteen? <laughs> so, we've got your know, diversity is an overrated, overused word yes. for me. Um, so, I think for me, when I've watched what hasn't happened for us, mm. you know, we lost Felix Dexter, and yes. Felix Dexter, you know, there wasn't. A kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just, he was just amazing. Yeah. But the one thing, can, can I just say something to you? The one thing I must say I, I'm enjoying is this lovely West Indian low lady sitting there. I mean, because all of these uh, young ladies, they are so mad about train. They are so mad about train. They are making the mad water. Yeah. And uh, not only a great person, but also a fantastic. Comedian. Yes. Now, why he didn't have his own show is just some, it's, it's baffling. And I've seen so many comedians and we have ideas, myself included, and we go in, but we've got to be black about our, our, our ideas. Yeah. We can't just have a great, funny idea. Yeah. And so that time goes, then the next generation comes, the Gina Yeshere's and all mm. of that. And then nothing seems to happen. So you get to a point where you think, we've got to do for ourselves. Yeah. Because that's the only way it's going to work. If you keep saying to somebody, can I come to your party? And they say, yes, you can, but you must stand over there. Yeah. You're going to stop going to that party. Yeah. You're going to start up your own party. And in the 80s and the 90s, we did that. But then we got comfortable because they started saying, well, why don't we have this big party together? Yeah. And so you come into this party and you think, oh, my God, we're all kind of having this party together. But the conversation that's happening at the party is changing. Yes. And yes. you're not privileged to it. Mm. So you're in the room having a party, but they've just gone over there and commissioned a, uh, a, a sitcom. Yeah. Or they've got a t but they're not telling you. Yeah. So we now need to, I think, leave the party. And create your own space. Yeah. So, because I've seen a lot of um, um, Richard Blackwood and uh, different guys, them having a lot of their road shows now. Mm -hmm. uh, is it somewhat similar to what was then? Is it, do you think it's like, it's happening again in a way subtly? Yes, because the next generation came in and said yeah. to us, you lot are on a long thing. Let's start up our own. Yeah. Let's do our own music, put it on the channels. Let's create our own songs. Mm. Let's sell it to ourselves and become yeah. Stormzy. Yeah. And that's what happens. They make it their own way. They make their films. They're doing their own things. And that's really what we should be doing because yeah. it's about ownership. I'm about owning. Yeah. You yeah. own your, your work. Mm. No one's going to pay me to write, so I write by myself, thank you very much. And of much. course, if you don't own it, they can always take it from you at any time. I've had many ideas sat down on development shelves. It's, we're developing it, Angie. Have you ever seen it, your ideas out there? 
after all the, all the time what do you do when you see that Andy? you learn yeah to shut up because you go into a meeting they say what would you do if you had this budget and you're trying to reach and this you audience. And, then you start to and you sit there and go, you know what I would do? I would just, I would get this and I would do that and I would do that and I would do that. And then they'll end it by saying, well, we have an idea similar to that, but yeah. And you think, okay. Yeah. So they've already told you that they're going to take yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you walk out there thinking, I really showed my best self by telling them all my ideas. And then you walk away and you see your ideas and there's no copyright. Wow. So I say to people, when you go into a meeting, give them your C plan, not your A plan or your B plan, your C plan. Yeah. When they call you back in, then you write in a contract. Fantastic. Good. <laughs> but, ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a quick break now. We're going to we set the base, we set the stage, and we're going to shoot off now to the next level. See you shortly. <laughs> <laughs> it was like we sighed, come over here, come over here. <laughs> so what are we going to do about white people? I know. <laughs> My best friend was white. And she got like, Angie, Angie, come over here. And I'm like, Jenny, now's not a good time, yeah? And as soon as you go into the classroom, everything relates to roots. I said to my teacher, sir, do you have to pick up that white chalk to abuse the blackboard? And playground was like segregation. Do you see roots? When your teacher told you to do something, will you get out of the classroom? That to me was like whipping motion. <laughs> Slave is over, sir. <laughs> no, my head is hot right now, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you and welcome back to the show with the great Angela Marr. Angie, thank you again. For thank you. <laughs> no, Angie, um, take me back. Mm -hmm. When I heard that before, all I was thinking about growing up in Jamaica, and there's a song which I love, my mother used to love it. Um, take me back to the place where I first was singing. Take me back. <laughs> oh, you're gonna, oh, you're singing. Are you singing? <laughs> no, I'm not a singer. So <laughs> I know Celine didn't sing yes. last time, she, so I should try, you know. Yeah. But it's that, we all grew up with that song, didn't yeah. we? You know, even though we were in church, it was like, oh God, they're going to sing this song. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. that song always stood with, stayed with me. Yes. You know, Andre Crouch, take me back to the place where I first believed. Yeah. And take me back. back. Come on, with place. Take me, me back there, Lord. To the place. Hey, where, where I, I first received you. Take me back, Jesus. Where <laughs> <laughs> you get drinks? You, you, got, you got to go down. Take me back. <laughs> they must have added the take me back, Jesus. Yeah, because I haven't you heard that to, version. You, come on, you got to treat Jamaica everything. Jamaican style, drop everything. Take me back, Jesus. Take me back, Jesus. <laughs> take me back, Jesus. <laughs> take me. And then the choir will go like this. Take, take me back. back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay, right, right. Where are we now? <laughs> we went back to church. We'll go back to church there. <laughs> now, tell me, um, the, the play. Tell us more about the play now. Um, well, you know, I, like you say, I grew up in the church. Yes. And there's some things about church that, at the time, I never understood what it was all about. Yes. And then there was a time when I realised that I understood what it was about. Yes. And at the time, we were just dying to get out of church, you know. Mm -hmm. We spent so much time being a part it, it being a part of our lives you know I grew up Pentecostal Church of God in Christ Broccoli and that was it that's all mm. I knew yeah that's all we knew that we went to school we went to church and my mother was a de um, evangelist my dad was a deacon yeah and, and that was bad. and I was still bad <laughs> 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 well, not on Sundays. <laughs> they had to con I could control myself on Sundays. So I, I, and you know, the funniest thing is like, you know, I could, in church, you just behave yourself because everybody else could tell you off. Yes. It's, okay, you go on. And, I, they, I, and yeah. they really could discipline you. Yes. They could conk you in the head and say, your mother know your ear. Yes. Or your yes. mother know your outside. Yes. And you used to have to go, all right, all right. Yes. At school was different. But I grew up in a place where I just, I, and I, I didn't know how much I loved it until I left. Mm. And I was go I'd go through life and the songs would come up and you would hear them. You know, you go to church, because yeah. church don't leave you. Yeah, I go to church, yes. I grew up in the church, I love church, I love gospel music. Yes. But I wasn't ready to go back to church. Yeah, because the, I think the Bible says, um, teach a child in the way of the Lord and when it's all they will depart and yeah. they keep coming back. But I just want to interject, 
and I don't want to miss it because you, you said something a while ago and I, and I said, um, uh, what, what was it? You said something and I said, I want to go back to it. It's about parents. What, what was it again? What did you say, Angie? You said, some <laughs> you said something a while ago. But don't worry, it will come back. But mm -hmm. keep talking about the play. When it comes back, I'm going to jump straight in. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so you grow up in, and, and you go to church, you enjoy it, and then you leave mm -hmm. because you want the boyfriend. You want to do wear the clothes that everybody else is wearing. You want to yeah. wear makeup. You just want to live because yeah. you didn't feel like you were living in church. Yeah. But you know in the back of your mind everything that was told to you yes. growing up. Yes. So you do want to get back to church eventually. Yes. You don't want to get into the kingdom. You know, mm. I just thought maybe I'd, I'd be on my deathbed going, is there anything you'd like to do now? Yeah, so I'd like yeah. to ask the Lord if I could come back into the kingdom. Wow. So in your mind, you've got this thing that's always niggling you because it just doesn't leave you. And one day when I, when I became a Christian seven years ago, it was time. But, but you, I said had seven, you said seven years ago, but didn't you believe that when you were going to church every week, you, got, you became a Christian sometime? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> jump up in the spirit. Sometimes you jump up in the spirit, and you're thinking, "I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian." And that's yeah. on, on Sunday. Yeah. Come Wednesday, you're like, "I don't know if I'm because it's I got to go to prime meeting, right? Yeah. So I don't yeah. want to go to prime meeting. So maybe I'm not a Christian again. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, you yeah. stop, start, stop, start. So we spent many a time in and out, in yeah. and out. I never got baptized until mm, I became years. a Christian as I got older. Yeah. But I I realized that, gosh, the church is was such a part of who I mm. am, and why I am. So at the time when I went back, I thought, oh my God, I'm not going to make this work in my world. Yes. But God has a way of doing something when it's his time. Mm. Because when I went back to church, it was like, I could do this. Yeah. I could do this from an adult perspective because I think I need it. Back then, I didn't need to be hearing like, draw me nearer, <laughs> nearer. <laughs> Near a blessed Lord. <laughs> it, was too, it was too slow for me. Yeah, you know, I yeah, wanted a bit yeah. of earth, wind and fire. Okay, okay. So now, uh, and I got my fire. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's a different type of fire now. Yeah, yeah. But the fact of the matter is when I, went, when I needed God, when I needed those moments, those songs was what I needed. Yeah. I needed to... It connected deep yes, at those moments. I needed moments, to go yeah. nearer. Yeah. And so when I'm sitting as an adult going... Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed mm. Lord. I hear it. Before I never heard it, I just thought that's just too long. But you're hearing something But I hear it now. now and I yeah. feel it now. Yeah. And I resonate with it now. And it all starts coming back. You know, like, it's like if I hear Lovers Rock. Yeah. And you hear silly games. I've been what? You yeah. connect. Yeah. You yeah. go right back to the dance when you're scrubbing. Or down by the river. Any, you yeah, yeah, yeah. You go right back there. Yeah, yeah. So the, the gospel music made me go right back there. And I just felt at peace. Mm. I, sent, I felt God. I felt in a different way to how God was presented to me growing up. Yeah. Like I always thought God was going to strike me down. Like everything I did was wrong. But now I have a relationship with God, a one-to-one. Yes. -one. I can talk to God. I can, I can have that relationship. Mm. And that was really important to me. So I wanted to capture that and take me back. Yes. I wanted to take the audience back to the first place that I believed. So it is somewhat like a ministry in a, in a certain sense. Well, I, w I would say that, yeah. but I wouldn't want to own it. I know when people say, what's your ministry? I used to think, oh, that, you leave that for the elders yeah, 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 yeah. and the, the big people in the church. Yeah, yeah, I surely yeah. haven't got a ministry. Yeah. And I, and I still kind of in and out with that thinking mm. because unless I'm full time with that ministry, then I, uh, then I would question it in some areas. Yeah. But although I understand ministry and that because this might I, be. I, I, think, I think that's maybe one of the issues as well in the Angie is because uh, many people conceptualize ministry as the typical way, mm. but then Jesus was a radical. Yeah. I don't think the church would have wanted Jesus in the church. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially become a mash up the place. Yeah, like a mash up the place and a lick old thing and I yeah. turn water into wine and drunk off the people. I mean, and I'm that's saying. why I drink wine because if Jesus made the wine, the least yeah. I could do is drink it. Yeah, right? yeah. You know what I mean? So growing up, we couldn't yeah. drink wine. It was like you can't drink alcohol and you can't. Yeah. So there was a lot of things that we had, we were raised with mm. that made us think that, well, we can't live like this. Yeah. So coming back to the church, I wanted to express, listen, my relationship was with God. I go to church, I may not be a, a weekly church goer, mm -hmm. but I'm a part of that world, yes. and, but I contribute differently. So some people have come to see the play and have gone back to church and been baptised. 
It's a ministry. <laughs> so it's a ministry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay. It, it, you, okay, it's like everybody do their bit, yeah. and then the other person, so the pre, uh, you, know, you do your bit, and then they go to church, and the bishop, ah, another one of Angie's um, ch <laughs> children or so is coming it's back coming home. You know? And I think that's the greatest thing about when I, I wanted to write a play that was authentic to yes. me. I, there was, uh, I think a pastor came up to me after the show, and he said to me, you would have to have lived that to have been able to have written yes. that authentically. Mm. And, and it really was a compliment to me yes. because I wanted to capture church that I knew. But I also wanted to deal with some of the stuff in there. You haven't seen it yet, have you, Silver? No, I haven't seen it. But, uh, you yeah. must come to our press yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Come to our press night on the 5th of December. Okay, okay. Yes. And yeah. you will see church. But I also want to deal with some issues that are really mm. quite strong that people perhaps didn't think I would deal with, like yeah. abuse in a gospel mm. musical. I, and you're right, I, I think we, we, we've got to move away from something we discussed earlier about the political correctness and just call a spade a spade. We've mm. got, life is too short now, you know, people are dying, children are dying. Yeah. We, we, we can't afford to play safe. No. Because guess what? We were safe before. Yes. <laughs> we don't have to be safe. We can take risks. Yes, yes. So I would, I would take risk with the pen mm -hmm. and push it and go, I am going to t deal with that. Yeah. But the difference with people complaining is I don't care. Once I've done everything that I think is right, yes. I can't do anything more for everybody who might come back with an issue. Yeah. Because then you'd be a fool to do that. If you know you've done something, stand by it and leave it there. Yeah. Even when someone comes and says, I don't like that bit, you have to say, okay. Because if 20 people come and said, I don't like that bit, you've got to change it 20 times. Yeah. So you've got to stand by your, stand by your work. And as what you say, you've got to believe what you believe and know what you know. That's you know? right. Oh, and and as, a, as a preacher in Jamaica named um, Reverend Al Miller, in, the Reverend, in Felt Cap, um, Fellowship Cap Tabernacle in okay. Kingston, mm -hmm. the one who was having doodles in the car. Oh, you okay. <laughs> yes, yes. He, he, he always said, it's a man, my name, and my name, not a change. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's right. You know, yes. so, so with, with, uh, where do you see... Uh, it's like it's it's building. Um, take me back. Is it, is it going worldwide? Well, you know that ultimately, you know, I feel blessed with Take mm. Me Back because I didn't know how I was going to do it. All I know is that God was just inspiring me to just write this piece yeah. and to be authentic with it and to trust Him. Yes. I remember when we were booking the theatre, we didn't. I didn't have the deposit for the theatre mm. to go and uh, book straight away and do this production that I normally do with my plays. Yes. And God just said, go and book it. And I'm like, oh, come on. They're going to ask me for the, the deposit. Yeah. And I don't want to pay that deposit and yet. Insurance and insurance. Yeah, and all the things that start to come into yeah. it. And it's like, they never asked me for the deposit. Wow. I've never ever done a production where they've never asked me for the deposit. Yes. And then the show sold out. So they could obviously take the, the of course. fee from that. Yes. And that's what's really been happening with the show, which the actors that I've got, most of them have not had an acting background. Yes. So we opened the casting call, yes. actors came in, and I trained them up for a couple of months, put them on the stage, and I said to them at, at the beginning of the rehearsal, I'm going to give you two things, I'm going to give mm. you sold out and stand in ovation. Yes. And on the night it was sold out, and they got their stand in ovation, yes. and yes. I was like, my work here is done. <laughs> but it felt good to be able to say, yes. you may never have done it before, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. Yes. It's just your first time. And that's if, and the first time has got to be the time when you take that first step. Absolutely. And and that's a key thing as well. And and tell me now, when is the next play? So uh. we run from the fourth of December to the fifteenth of December. That's two weeks, and it's our last chance to see it. We've been going for nearly about um, eighteen months now. We've been developing this. You, you mean last chance for this year? Yes. No, uh, for, for now, actually, because we'll have to really work out how and what the next plan is, because I think yeah. it's film. Right, right. I know it's film. Yes. So that we can reach the masses. Right, right. Um, this is, it's just a great talking point in, because of the yes. subjects that we are raising. Mm. And I think it's a very powerful piece. I'm so proud of this play. Like, I mm. love my other plays, but this play is deep for me, because mm. it means something to me, because... I'm, I'm kind of on that stage in certain areas yeah. and to come back to the kingdom for such a time as this to yeah. be able to use my skills, it's got to be a blessing. Yeah, because
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on The Silburn Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But the important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comments, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you. I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much. See you next time.